welcome to part two of my Newcastle trip. I'm just packing up the hotel room at the moment. I'm gonna go and have some brekkie and uh, then I will be heading to Torquet. It's 6.30 in the morning and um, yeah, head back to the car and get moving. I've just uh, had some brekkie at Side Pocket Espresso, which is like literally in the corner of a BP, which is funny. But they, um, yeah, they have really good food and good coffee so yeah definitely recommend checking them out if you're here but now I'm gonna drive to Torquet it's about eight o'clock ten past eight so I'll head over there now and um, yeah looking forward to it Just arrived at Torquet. Just spoke with James. James Carr is here, little Jimmy. He's packed for camping. Oh, yeah. And you got a little bit of juice in there. <laughs> here we go, exhaust. Get a little bit of noise out of this thing. <laughs> It'll yeah. sound better than mine. It'll sound a little bit better. But like, it's not really... I thought it was gonna look worse on the here. Yeah, but when you compare it to this... You know, if you look at... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's just... Night and day. Target started in the 80s basically seeing a gap in the market for premium um, products that are actually performing, uh, improving the performance of vehicles. Yeah. And um, since then it's kind of changed into this uh, different company that makes exhaust and electronic products that all focus around freedom um, and enhancing the performance of your vehicle. And with the with the actual Torquet exhaust, like in terms of the Jimny, because they do have quite a way of getting that exhaust around everything being such a small car what makes like the torquid exhaust now um special in terms of other exhausts that are on the market yeah so one of the big things is it's made from um three or four grade stainless steel so that's like a premium material um and it's also there's a few things that you'll see like the flanges on this um are welded on the inside and outside and basically what that means is um it's just stronger than the cheaper exhaust where you get mm. where there's no weld on the inside and the flange will crack. Oh, right. Um, three or four grade stainless is pretty much the best that you can use on an aftermarket exhaust. Yeah. Um, and it gives the best rust resistance. And then you've also got, on these exhausts, it's up to two mil stainless. So it gives it a nice deep note without a, um, a tinny kind of uh, sound. So if like you have the stock Jimmy and you want a, an exhaust upgrade, what, what are some of like the reasons to why you should get an upgrade in the first place? Um, <laughs> We're like having like uh, commercial breaks and things. <laughs> yeah. The biggest reason you would is for the Jimny would be the note. You get, you'll get better uh, fuel efficiency and increased performance, but mm. being such a small engine, it's hard to notice that. So realistically, um, the main gain that you're going to get from upgrading your exhaust with talk exhaust is going to be the improved note. So you'll see yeah. the comparison in this video. Uh, it's a massive change. Because this one is one and a half years old and I've been up driving in glass house twice with it enough to beach a lot as well and just look at how it looks like it's just yeah doesn't look great so I mean if you at least want your underbody to look somewhat shiny you've got this this bad boy <laughs> yeah so it'll still um, get some surface rust but the yeah. good thing about it is that you can just polish it off yeah, uh, yeah. pretty easily because it's nice thick stainless yeah uh, exactly just keep polishing it if you want it to look really nice and shiny okay update the Actual, I didn't know this, but the actual Jimny exhaust is stainless, but it's definitely great of stainless steel. Correct. Yeah. So that's why it looks like that. So I'm learning something new every day, but anyways. That's one of the differences between um, Torque and the competition exhaust as well, is uh, not necessarily for the Jimny, but other other vehicles, the exhaust will be made out of 409, um, yeah. which is like a not as premium grade of stainless, so it's less rust resistant. So it's definitely something to look out for, um, yeah. is what grade of stainless, because not all stainless exhausts are made the same. Yeah. 
And then it's also like the way that this one, I guess, um, forms around the chimney. Because you mentioned like if you do install a long range of tank, it is made for that. And if you do ex install an exhaust, like let's say you go to an exhaust fitter and they install an exhaust exactly where this one is sitting right now, like you might not be able to fit aftermarket yeah, accessories yeah. with it. So um, in development, they partner with all of the major kind of companies. So like yeah. the Long Ranger, Brown Davis, um, this is for heaps of different models, but including like companies like J-Max, if you have a 79, yeah. um, and basically we design our exhaust so they work with all of the major aftermarket accessories. So yeah, right. tanks, suspension, everything like that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You made a shiny again. Uh, I wouldn't look like that from the factory though. <laughs> That's interesting. The main reason that it stays looking good for longer, because the stock exhaust is stainless as well, it won't be 304, it'll yeah. be 409 or one of the other you know, cheaper grades of stainless. Yeah. The main thing is though that because the exhaust is polished, there's uh, there's less, uh, you know, micro cavity, you know, like yeah. spots for the dirt and, okay. and stuff to, to, to stick in. Right. Like if you think about it, if you go down to, um, if you go down to like the ocean baths, there's mm. handrails, and the handrails all basically look shiny except around where the welds are. Yeah, yeah. And that's because the rails themselves have been polished like a mirror, yeah. and there's nowhere for the corrosion to form or any of the dirt to get stuck to it. Whereas the welds will often look dirty. The main reason the um, aftermarket exhaust will stay really nice for longer is it is a higher grade of stainless, mm. um, so it's more corrosion resistant. But the finish is a big part of it as well. The finish yeah. is is what makes it difficult for dirt to stick to it and for corrosion to form. If you looked at it under a microscope, it'd be much smoother than the yeah. factory system, which doesn't have a nice finish on it. Right. That makes a big difference. I think that's really good to know because a lot of people that might be looking at installing exhaust, like just with the normal exhaust fitter or something like that. Yes. It's something to probably look out for, like what type of grade they're using for their exhausts. Yeah. yeah. A heap of companies will just say, oh, we've got a stainless exhaust, but... Yeah. Because not all stainless it, is the same. It'll be 409 most of the time. 409. Okay. Which is perfectly suitable for an exhaust, you know, but if, if, if you don't care like what it looks like and if you go like oh it'll, you know the last five years and i won't have the car in five years then yeah. i guess it probably doesn't make too much difference but yeah if, if you want to if you want to still look excellent in five years then you want one that's 304 yeah um and you want one that already has a pretty smooth nice finish on it to begin with because the nicer the finish is the easier it is to clean the less dirt it will pick up yeah and in the future like with 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 uh Say with your partner's exhaust, if he has a 304 stainless steel exhaust that was yep. polished, you could take some Scotch Bright and just Scotch Bright the bits that you can see. Yeah. And in 10 minutes of just WD-40 and Scotch Bright, it'll look exactly like new again. Yeah. But you, okay. But you can't do that with say a 409 or like the factory. You, you have to use machine tools to to polish it because it never came polished. Yeah. Okay. So that, that polish finish makes the biggest difference. Yeah. So now you just polished it, and that's how it ended up like that. Yeah. You notice that that part that's polished there will stay cleaner for longer than the rest of it, even though obviously the material is just the factory right. material. So yeah. it's not just the material; it's also the level of finish put on the outside of the exhaust. As well. It's like um, take like a brand new car with really nice, like clear on it. It's pretty easy to wash, and it doesn't yeah. pick up that much dirt. But then if you have like a 20 year old car with chalky red faded mm. paint, it picks up heaps of dirt and fingerprints and everything yeah. immediately and they're hard to wash off as well. Yeah. It's the same thing. If it's got a hard smooth surface, it doesn't pick up the dirt and the dirt washes off very easily. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing here. Yeah, look at that. This is long. What? We're going to take this mount, and this mount is going to be installed on there. Yeah. And that's going to support the exhaust when it passes down through here. Mm -hmm. Whereas the stock one is right over here on that big muffler yeah, box. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you, you can't use this because the long range fuel tank covers this entire yeah. area yeah, here. Exactly. So, so instead of coming through here, like you were asking before, and then going around, we're actually coming closer in this direction to begin with. And there's one more thing, because the exhaust is quite close through here, we have a little key clamp, and I'll show you how that works as well in a moment. But it's going to bolt there underneath that factory bolt yep. and it's going to clamp around this and we're going to pull that up and that gives us better this is the handbrake cable, yeah exactly and that yeah. gives us good clearance for the exhaust so that it doesn't get hot and yeah. so it lasts as long as possible yeah because that's also a big issue when you install exhaust like some of them might install it too close to like cables and things so it'll just heat it up i mean really it's definitely up. close to the cable which is why it has that little bracket there yeah it's going to hold it up out of the way yeah the standard rubber is is um a two-hole design mm. and ours is a three-hole design and then the hangers on the back of the exhaust are three holders on. The reason for that is that with the two holes, it can swing like this, mm. but with three holes, it can't do that because it's, it's held on by two. Exactly. So it's kind of like a stool with two legs 
Whereas a stool with three legs can't fall over, same type of principle, I suppose. So it keeps so, it more secure and I guess also noise, if um, like it starts wobbling around? The main thing is that because the exhaust is much larger, um, and it's also made to fit with aftermarket accessories, which give it less room, like the fuel tank, for example, is very large. Mm. Um, and of course, if you're taking this, uh, you know, hardcore off-road, then you're going to be flexed up a lot more, which yeah. as well gives you less clearance in the back. So the idea is just to hold it a lot more securely. Yeah. So that, you know, given that you'll have less space with aftermarket accessories, mm. and given that likely your suspension is flexing around more, yeah. I mean, it'll be much less likely to wobble around and... Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, if you're up a rock at a huge angle, yeah, yeah, you don't want yeah. the exhaust all swung a couple <laughs> inches this way. And the factory one can. Literally, yeah. And on a factory car, um, you know, it, it, it can move a lot. So That's we got quite these interesting. on to, to secure it better like, as well. Just like... Because I've heard, like, you know, you hear it on cars, like, even on my partner's car, I bet he has one of these because it does make... Like, like noise here and there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like, it doesn't right. knock, but it makes like, eh, eh. Yeah, like, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, these are, this is much stronger. So instead yeah. of having a hanger here and a hanger here, our system has two hangers on each side. Yeah. And then the triangle, <clears throat> excuse me, the triangle rubbers as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, we're done. Yep. I'll do the honors. Will I fit? <laughs> that looks so sick, too. <laughs> yeah, so we finished the install. It's looking pretty good. Going along. What do you reckon? Is it Sounds as cool so as yours now? It's as cool as mine. Yeah, it's as cool as yours. <laughs> I look forward to testing it out. It'll be interesting to see sort of. Bed Dre is going to be a little bit jealous. But that's okay. Well. Probably sounds better than highlights. Yeah, I know. Definitely. Well, James. It's now time for your installation. <laughs> so now that the exhaust is on, we thought we'd put a pedal torque on as well because it's super easy to do. Um, it takes about 30 seconds, so I'll quickly show you how to do it. Um, under your accelerator pedal, there's a plug on top of it. Um, pretty much, we'll just disconnect the plug, and this acts as a harness. It'll go. Which in plug there. is it? If you point at it. Right. It's like the one in there, isn't it? Yeah. So it's that one there. Yeah. There you go. Out. Yeah. So I just pull that off, and then this harness will just go in between, and that'll mount on the dash. Yeah. So you put it in between there, do you? Well, so you just run the cable up. Yeah. So I've tucked it above the yeah. steering wheel and everything like that. Yeah. Um, the steering column. And then basically you just mount that wherever you want. Yeah. I found it was better to just kind of sit it in there. But okay. when you pull the harness, uh, the bracket off, it's got two screws. So yeah. it's better to screw it on because literally nothing sticks to the gym now. Nothing sticks to it. So yeah. um, you can just screw it in, but obviously you screw it somewhere where there's no airbags. <laughs> um, but like over here is a good spot or yeah. even just here, somewhere that's over reachable. There. Yeah, on this one. Probably good because that's just a plastic panel on us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can buy like some some of the stronger tapes for it, like yeah. the sticky double sided sticky tape. I tried a few different ones and nothing seemed but nothing's to working. Make oh. it stick. Yeah. Um, which is why mine ends up like just sitting kind of in that little. Which is a fair box. review. Screw it on. Yeah. Huh? I'd, I'd probably screw it on. <laughs> yeah. <personally. laughs> cool. All right, nice. Cool. Do you want to show me just what you packed? Yeah. So obviously, um, James is a bit more organized than me, packing wise. Like, mine looks like absolute crap <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Look at this. This is so much more organized than what my car looks like right now. So, we got the shelves that I made um, with like this drawer kind of thing, which yeah. is just like a gear drawer and a 20 litre fridge. Swag, K on shelf. K on shelf, yeah. It's looking good. Ready for at least one night of camping. Maybe two nights. Maybe we'll two nights. Like. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, we want to head up to um, Stockton. Um, go for some driving on the sand if possible. Maybe tomorrow morning yeah. would be good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go and grab some food. Cool. And then you've done that. Four. Four? 
yeah cool we'll see you guys later we just uh, installed the exhaust super excited it's sounding sick um, so thanks so much to everyone at talk it and James and everyone for um, hooking me up with and installing it because it just makes such a difference and um, to the car in itself and looking at sort of how I guess rusty the stock exhaust had gotten it just looks so much cleaner and nicer and hopefully I'm gonna be able to also update you in terms of the fuel economy that comes out of it as well because um, I'm hoping that it will improve that um, as well so yeah we just finished up right before it started raining so now it's bucketing down I'm just gonna go and find a place to eat some lunch and then sort of explore what I can explore in this area when it's raining like this like yeah it's not not ideal at the moment but yeah we'll, um, we'll have a look around and see sort of what um, what's interesting some stuff I maybe want to check out because I haven't been to Newcastle before but yeah it's a bit shit with the weather I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but yeah we'll, uh, we'll go and get some lunch first and see how we go I've made my way down to Nobby Beach and uh, it's a little bit windy so I hope you can hear me but yeah it's a really nice um, nice place to just go for a walk they got this um, I don't really know if I can call that a lighthouse up there I have to actually google that because uh, I'm not gonna walk all that way because <laughs> uh, I'm really hungry I was supposed to go for lunch now but I just decided to stop and have a look it's really beautiful it's a little bit of surf out there um, the waves look better earlier but but yeah it's just nice to stop and actually take time to look around I um, I've just had lunch and then I went to King's full drive soup center and uh, I bought James this one uh, but I also bought because if you watched part one of this trip you know that my battery went flat because <laughs> I charged my Dometic battery on it and I didn't unplug the Anderson plug uh, in my car while I went to have lunch. So yeah, it drained the battery and I was standing there and I was like, what do I do now? So um, yeah, no more <laughs> because I decided to buy the um, thousand lithium jump starter from Kings. So I've heard a couple of people have had it and they're happy with it. So um, yeah, like in terms of Kings, I think there's a lot of things that are like good quality and then there's things that are like less quali good quality. Um, but yeah, I just thought this would be a handy thing to have with me. So if I now get stuck and the battery's flat, I don't have to freak out, don't have to call someone to come and jumpstart my car, which is good. So, and now uh, James, go on too, because you know, I said, it's a good thing to have if you need it so but yeah it's been a good day um it's still raining but i just checked the weather forecast and it's uh gonna clear up uh for us when we head out camping later in this afternoon so uh that will be part three of this trip to newcastle so definitely tune in for that next stage of the camping spot and me heading back up to the sunshine coast but yeah i hope you like this video today and yeah I'm super excited about the installation I did um, with Torque today with the exhaust and the throttle controller so definitely looking forward to show you guys more of how that how that um, comes along as we go and I'll definitely give you guys a review of it um, once I get a time to I guess use it for a while and I've driven with the exhaust for a while and things like that but um, yeah look forward to doing that and I'll see you in the next video.